Hey everyone, I'm Pauline from the blog richfinancialindependence.com and when I'm not spending all my money biking around Europe, I'm stacking Benjamins in Guatemala. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and you know, a couple of weeks ago, I saw the government offered a new GDP report. I am not sure why they focus on GDP so much or what that's even got to do with me, but you know, but we'll we'll tackle that later because there was bigger news last week. Fidelity just introduced two no-fee mutual funds and slashed fees on lots of their business. What does it mean for your money? Today, we welcome from Fidelity Investments, Vice President of Retirement, Ken Hevert. In our headline segment, the Wall Street Journal reports that one big bank is still finding ways to sock it to their customers, and not in a good way. And when we throw out the Haven Lifeline, we'll talk to Colin, who wonders about Roth and traditional 401k accounts. How should he use them to best retire early? We'll also bring the show to a crescendo, an apex, a zenith, one might say, with my amazing trivia. And now, two guys who have been peddling this show for zero fees, Joe and O-J-J-J-J-G. And even with no fee, it's still a questionable value. I was going to say, aren't we the NASCAR? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, kids, welcome to another episode of Stacking Benjamins. And if we sound different today, it's because we have rolled out the mobile mics to check these out because we're getting ready to go on the road, OG. We got to test all this cool gear out. It's going to be awesome. I'll tell you the dates. We are headed to Orlando, September 25th. If you're going to be there, I'm going to give you the link for tickets right now because tickets just went on sale. But Orlando, September 25th. Beautiful live show. Michelle Schroeder Gardner is going to be our guest. It's going to be fantastic. Then October 9th, two weeks later, we're going to head to Kansas City, Missouri. Going to get our Kansas City on. Maybe get some of that barbecue while we're there. Mm. Uh, Chris Costello, the CEO of Bloom, joins us. TIAA is going to have a difference maker from the Kansas City community talking about how they're helping out Kansas City. We've got some other special guests. The Penny Pinchin Mama. Tracy Phobes is going to join us there. Also, Carrie Olson going to join us. And then two weeks later, we're in Detroit, if you're Michigan. You're not sick of us already. You can follow <laughs> us to Detroit. Go to all three. Third. We have a discount for that. Where, yeah. Buy each one, it's only 10 bucks. Yep. Buy three, it's $29.99. It's $29.99. It's a huge discount. But we can announce that Shannon Kason, my favorite storyteller of all time. He's been on The Moth. He's been on Snap Judgment. Now he's going to be live from Go Comedy Club in Ferndale, Michigan. By the way, in Orlando and in Kansas City, we'll be at the Improv doing our unique brand of comedy that some people call a financial podcast. Head to stockybenjamins.com forward slash tour, and that's where you'll get tickets. 10 bucks a ticket. We hope to see as many people as possible there, and they're going to go quick. So make sure that you get in early. Oh, gee, we got a great show today because I don't know if you heard this. There was a little scuttlebutt, as mom calls it, at Fidelity on Wednesday. Hmm. I don't know if you saw that last week. A little something going on. Yeah, like my Twitter feed completely blew up. Did you see this? No, didn't. It's incredible. Nope, didn't see it. Didn't hear about it yet. And what was cool was we were able to get a hold of the people at Fidelity and we got... An exclusive interview? Exclusive with our friend Ken Hevert from Fidelity, who's going to dig in and we'll find out. Two fee-free funds, zero fee. Say that three times real fast. Do you know how we always talk about how financial products have been a race to the bottom? Mm-hmm. We've reached the bottom. And you've always wondered who was going to be first to the bottom. Who would have said it was Fidelity? Is there still more to go, you think? What, where they pay us? Yeah. Maybe they pay us to, but please buy our management. We'll, we'll give you 50 bucks to buy our management. You think that's coming next? Mm. We'll talk about that. But first, you know what we're going to talk about, OG? 
We're going to talk about my awesome new Away luggage. This episode of Stacky Benjamin is brought to you by Away. Um, Away makes first-class luggage at coach prices that allows you to charge your phone on the go. For $20 off a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com forward slash SB and use promo code SB. That's awaytravel.com slash SB, promo code SB. I got a story about my Away luggage experience just going to Philadelphia in the podcast movement conference, but I'm going to save that for the middle of the show. So stay tuned for that. Very, very cool story. So we way. were, we were traveling from back home and the, uh, gate agent says, Hold, hold on, sir. Is the battery out of that suitcase? <laughs> they know. They already knew. And I said, well, no, it's not. She goes, well, you can't, you got to take the battery out. I go, where should I put it? And she said, well, you got to put it in your carry-on. I said, yeah. this is the carry-on. You want me to take it out and put it in itself? And she just looked at me and went, bleh, bleh. <laughs> she like glitched out and like kept Kabow. going. <laughs> but she had just been so trained to like, you know, check for those things. Now, obviously you can carry those on, but she just was so tuned to them. So even the airline knows about them. They're so freaking awesome. <laughs> Mrs. OG loves it. She's like, you got a stupid color, but... It's, uh, I'll tell you my story because I have a very similar mm-hmm. awesome story. By the way, speaking of awesome, thanks to Harry's for supporting Stacky Benjamins. Harry stands behind the quality of their blades, but they know that switching razors is not an easy decision. So they created a trial offer. Claim yours by heading to harrys.com forward slash SB. I love speaking of love affair, I love our sponsors. Those are two of my favorite sponsors. Yeah, two favorite, yep. Oh, my, that, that hairy shaving cream is unbelievable. But we got an unbelievable show. We got Fidelity Investments waiting in the wings. Our friend Ken Hevert is uh, going to join us on the shortwave to give us the late breaking news on what's going on over there at Fidelity, the craziness. But first, we got a couple, speaking of crazy, we got some crazy headlines. So let's get the party started. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins headlines. Our first headline comes to us from the Wall Street Journal, and this is written by Emily Glazer. Whistleblowers detail Wells Fargo wealth management woes. Wealth management woes at Wells Fargo? What could they be talking about? Who would have thunk of it? That never happens at Wells Fargo. Nothing. Nothing below board. Let's jump in. Lofty sales goals were at the heart of the scandal at Wells Fargo and company's retail bank. Incentives also appear to be at the root of issues under investigation within its wealth management business. Wells Fargo financial advisors pushed clients into products that generated additional fees and often moved client assets between different products or investing platforms to generate more revenue and bigger bonuses, according to more than two dozen former employees and documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. By the way, if one person complains or two people complain. Yeah, don't you have to multiply that by like a factor of 30 or something? (laughs) Maybe if it's one or two people, I'm like, okay, disgruntled employees, a company the size of Wells Fargo, 24 people complain. Mm -hmm. Mm, Might be a problem. Advisors frequently targeted wealthy clients in Wells Fargo's private bank, sometimes steering them into alternative investment funds, of which Wells Fargo was the majority owner, allowing the San Francisco bank to collect another helping of fees. Wells Fargo spokeswoman Shay Lordno said that the bank is committed to thorough reviews of the wealth and investment management business and is making significant progress in identifying and fixing any issues. It's funny how they're committed. (laughs) You're committed when 24 people alert the Wall Street Journal that you might be doing the wrong thing. Yeah, isn't that funny? Last September, four Wells Fargo's financial advisors in Arizona sent a letter to the Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission. So advisors. They work for the company. Ratted out themselves, basically. I mean, not themselves, but. Detailing what they said were longstanding problems with the banks dealing with wealth management customers. In January, two financial advisors in Orange County, California, sent a formal complaint to the SEC alleging similar problems. How do you know? Let, let's get away from Wells Fargo f- for a second because, oh, gee, they've been a big punching bag and maybe rightfully so. But how do you know this isn't happening to you? Well, it goes to show that it's impossible for a financial planner or a financial advisor to serve two masters. It does not matter what they tell you. It doesn't matter what sort of piles of disclosure paperwork that they put in front of you. Because at the end of the day, we're all governed by what's in it for me. And when your interests are not aligned with that of the person you're trying to help, no matter how noble you think you are there's a high likelihood of 
taking advantage of it. And it's not just that the advisors were taking advantage of it. It was that they were forced to do it because if they didn't hit these sales targets, what do you think happens? You mean it's a part of the culture? Yeah. If you are a stockbroker, I'm going to stop calling them advisors because it's, it does disservice to those people who are. If you're a stockbroker, if you're a product salesperson and your boss says to you, sell $10,000 worth of this, what do you say? No, I don't want to. Well, then they go, okay, great. You're fired. Or move on to the next thing. Further down in the piece, to your point, Wells Fargo's brokerage division was known for sales goals and payouts that were higher than industry peers, such as Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. Absolutely. Advisors across the wealth management business sometimes shifted client assets between products such as certificates of deposit and structured notes or put clients into products that earn the bank higher fees current and former employees said. In doing so, financial advisors relied on unclear fee arrangements, the employee said. What's more, once a customer signed certain paperwork, advisors were often able to make multiple changes to accounts without having to update the customer, they added, which could trigger additional fees. That's why I never really liked discretionary accounts, meaning where I signed something just giving my advisor discretion to move stuff without contacting me. How do you feel about discretionary accounts? Well, it depends on the context of the word. So you can have a discretionary account that allows your advisor to trade on your behalf or rebalance the account on your behalf, even pay his own fees. That's how we do it. That's how the vast majority of the advisory space does it, is you're hiring us to manage your money. But what we can't do is take your money from your brokerage account IRA and put it into an annuity and then take it from the annuity and put it back into the brokerage account to generate another bonus and then go buy a CD with the money and then turn around and put it back in the annuity to get another bonus. Like we can't move between products. Yeah. It's really frustrating, but this is my favorite piece of this. So it says between 2012 and 2015, advisors were eligible for a growth award of at least 15% of their income right? Could you imagine getting a guaranteed 15% bonus? So the bank allotted $250 million in their budget for this program. But since advisors use loopholes to reach the lofty and sometimes unattainable goals, they paid out $750 million in bonuses over that three-year period. Cha-ching. I mean, it, it seems like if you're at the top of Wells Fargo and you're paying out three times as much, you got to start thinking, how are so many people reaching this? Yeah, shouldn't this be a little more challenging? <laughs> but it just goes to prove my point. You cannot have somebody who's conflicted. It doesn't matter. It, and this is so unbelievably frustrating when you talk to a client or you talk to somebody you care about and they're like, oh no, my buddy over at XYZ Brokers Company, he's totally above board. He can be, and he probably really wants to be. But is he willing to lose his job for you? You think about how companies have some of these sales incentives. Among employees, 2015 at Wells Fargo became known as, quote, the year of the annuity <laughs> because advisors would push clients into these higher fee products to meet their revenue targets. Some advisors would redeem clients from annuities that had large surrender charges. Those are fees to get out for people who don't know that term and place them into another product with annual fees of one to one half percent, a product known as churning employees said a process. Yeah. And by the way, in annuities by themselves are not the problem. When you have practices like this in annuities, it's the problem. There's some companies like Blueprint Income doing some great stuff, TIAA doing some revolutionary things, some other companies. So well, and moving from, again, looking at it on the grand scale of things, it's atrocious. Moving from one product to another is not inherently bad. Moving from one strategy to another is not inherently bad. Moving from one investment to another is not bad. But you put it all together, all the pieces of the puzzle, and say, well, why? You know, one off, if you're a regulator, and this is, I kind of push back on the regulations with this, right? We got rid of the Department of Labor ruling, you know, fiduciary rule, and now the SEC is trying to come up with theirs, all because of industry pushback, right? Who are the people that were lobbying against this? Not consumers. <laughs> consumers didn't say, you know what, it's, we should have a pretty clear line between salesman and advisor, right? Like consumers are like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so do you think advisors were the ones that were saying, no, we should, we should blurry it all up? No, it wasn't advisors. Who was it? It was the freaking it was Wells the Fargo. It was the, you know, and there's great people. That's the problem, right? But my challenge to you is this. If you are one of those people, if you work at one of these places, how can you say that? How can you say, 
I serve my client. When your boss could walk into your office tomorrow and say, if you don't sell $10,000 worth of this tomorrow, we're going to let you go to the next day. And if you have that sort of relationship with your company where they are in charge of your livelihood, you can't tell me that you're going to always put your client's needs first because it's impossible. So if you're a client of one of these, you really have to ask yourself, is this the right thing? Bob might be a nice guy. Susan might be a nice gal. And you've been working with them for 35 years. That word fiduciary needs to be a part of that relationship, I think is what you're saying. Absolutely, it does. And you cannot be both at the same time. We'll link to that piece on our show notes page, stackybenjamins.com. If somebody wants to get out the popcorn and read more <laughs> about problems oh, it goes of Wells on, Fargo, it? it is long. Oh, and there's more stuff. Other shoes have dropped since this article uh, week ago. Too. Hey, and while we're in it, let's have some more fun. This one comes to us from financialplanning.com. $8 million fraud paid for massages. What's wrong with that? Cigars, plane so tickets. Far, so good. <laughs> according to the feds. I like everything about this. I know. I would do a sales contest at my firm for massages <laughs> and cigars. Those are the ones you got to be worried about with my company. This piece is written by Sean Nalaka. Airline tickets, massages, and cigars. That's what was purchased with clients' money oh, okay. after yeah, an advisor perpetrated an $8 million fraud that lasted almost two decades, according to federal prosecutors. Stephen Pagertanis, and I think I slaughtered that one, OG. That's okay. He slaughtered his clients, too, he, so it's okay. He's, yeah, he's, he's not the only one getting slaughtered. 58 years old, charged with nine counts of securities fraud, mail, and wire fraud conspiracies, as well as money laundering for orchestrating a Ponzi-like scheme that duped more than a dozen elderly investors. More than a dozen bothers me, but just slap the word elderly on that, and I'm... Oh, Special place no. in H-E double hockey sticks. According to an indictment unsealed in New York, at least 17 individuals, many of whom were elderly women and longtime clients, collectively, which goes back to what you said about the last piece, not that I'll keep reading, but hey, Bob's been my buddy for how long? For a long time. And that means that he's okay. Doesn't mean. Could be. Could absolutely could Most be. Most of the time is. Probably is. But just so because they've been check. your advisor for a long time. Absolutely. They collectively invested more than $13 million with him, supposedly for real estate investments, the indictment says. In the end, these individuals sustained losses of more than $8 million. $13 million invested, losses of only $8 million. Yeah, hey, I could change, too. You still got, got the got five. Like you. you still got the five. Right. What are you complaining about? The money was supposed to be invested in Genesis Land Development, a publicly traded company based in Calgary, Canada, mm -hmm. according to a real close to New York, <laughs> according to a parallel civil complaint filed by the SEC. After telling clients to make checks payable to Genesis, Pagertanis instead deposited the money into a shell company, Genesis One Holdings, ah. which he secretly controlled. Secretly he controlled. enticed his victims with guaranteed fixed interest rates of up to 8% annually, mm. handing them back their own money, probably a piece of their own money, according to the complaint. And your statements written in crayon. Man. Thanks for giving us all bad name there, uh, Steve. Appreciate it. Problems again, though, in the private REIT market, by the way, it, you really got to understand and get the prospectus on the private REIT. And then when you get your statements, they should be available online from a third party vendor that you can see. Not <laughs> If it's written from your advisor. Yeah. In crayon. <laughs> right. On a whiteboard? Because there's no way for him to have a third party sending you this stuff. Like, you have to be able to have it as part of your portfolio. And if you can't add it to your your Mint mm -hmm. uh, or your Tiller or whatever it might be, if your advisor's going, well, no, that particular investment, it's a special thing. Spidey sense should be tingling at that point. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is your advisor, not a fiduciary, might be a good person, but once again, that bit a lot of people, as mom says, bit them in the butt. I'm just about to call up uh, Ken Hevert. Because if you didn't know, there's big news this last week out of Fidelity. The race to the bottom and no fees on investments. Well, guess what? Fidelity now has come out with two funds, not one OG, but two that have a fee of exactly zero. How do you make money when you're charging zero? How does that work? Fidelity also slashed a bunch of other account fees. Let's talk to him and then maybe you and I will regroup and talk about the discussion afterwards. Let's call Ken Hevert at Fidelity.
And joining us on My Dad Shortwave, Ken Hevert, Senior Vice President, Retirement from Fidelity Investments. Ken, how are you, man? Hey, Joe, we're doing terrific. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Well, too bad you guys have nothing going on. Last week, you guys on Wednesday really blew up the airwaves. Uh, Every single outlet I saw was talking about what you did. Explain to the three listeners out there that don't know what you guys did last week, what's going on at Fidelity. Yeah, we like to say we're rewriting the rules of investing for Americans. And there's three parts to really what we did here, Joe. The first is that we've introduced the first of its kind, zero expense index funds. So we're introducing two new zero expense index funds. Also related to index funds is that we have reduced the expense ratios on 21 of the Fidelity Managed Index Funds to a point that is now lower than anybody in the business. The second category, Joe, that we've been focusing on is eliminating all of those sort of unwanted nuisance fees associated with accounts. No account fees to open, no maintenance fees. Uh, We've eliminated the money movement fees on domestic transactions. And then thirdly, we've actually eliminated the minimum initial investment requirements on uh, Fidelity's uh, retail funds. So what this is all about, Joe, is realizing the uh, American dream has gotten you know more and more costly. And what Fidelity is doing is really trying to rewrite the rules and make investing more accessible and simpler and better value. I'm going to want to walk through a lot of those things for a little more detail. But before we do that, the obvious question that everybody has is, how does Fidelity make money on a zero-fee fund? Well, we don't make money on a zero-fee fund. I mean, that is the reality. You know, we are in this over the long haul for long-term relationships with our customers, with their families, uh, multi-generations. These particular funds are, they're innovative and they're new. So no, we're not going to make money on these funds. However, in order to uh, help families and individuals realize their goals throughout all of their life stages, they're going to utilize a variety of services from Fidelity. Let's start with these two funds, though, Ken. Let's dig in. How do these two funds work? Exactly what are they? Yeah, so the first one is basically a total market fund. It's a U.S.-based index fund. And one of the things that we've done very differently that does help us manage the cost associated with this is we've created a proprietary market cap weighted index approach. So the first uh, new zero expense index fund is a total U.S. market. And uh, we start with the 3,000 largest U.S. stocks and then ultimately, you know, screen them for liquidity and a variety of other criteria. So that's the first one. But by creating and utilizing a proprietary market cap weighted index, we actually avoid things like licensing fees on other commercial indexes. So again, what we're trying to do here is take a really good look at, you know, where can we strip out some of the cost um, and ultimately, you know, put the Benjamins back in the customer's pocket. I, I definitely like that. When it comes to that type of fund, what's the right place to put that type of fund in a portfolio, Ken, would you believe? What's most important is that the investor thinks about their goals within, number one, their risk tolerance, number two, their time horizon, and you know how they're going to utilize that money. So for example, is it in a tax-advantaged long-term IRA? Is it in a, a taxable account? Right. So those are the important considerations. And we believe that there's a place for both index funds as well as actively managed funds and individual securities in, in a portfolio. The two funds that we introduced, we consider core index funds. And so they could represent the core holding in a diversified portfolio and then utilizing other funds of different styles, you know, different value approaches can then be used to round out and diversify the portfolio any more. So the two funds we introduced, and I didn't get to the second one. Yeah, yet. right. It's an international fund. It's a non, you know, non-US okay. uh, international fund. So they're core index funds. Yeah, let's dive into that second one then, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So very similar idea, as opposed to you know focusing on the 3,000 largest by market cap. What we're doing is we are starting with the 90% of the largest stocks and companies in each country. And then again, using a very similar screening process, 
for liquidity and then portfolio construction. It's a very similar idea, proprietary market cap weighted indexing approach that we're using. You know, we found a way to eliminate some of the unnecessary costs associated with this type of core investment solution. A lot of your funds are available, obviously, Ken, on a lot of different platforms. Will these two funds only be available on the Fidelity platform or do you think that your partner firms will pick them up as well? Yeah, Joe, they're only available through Fidelity.com. I love this idea of of getting rid of all the baloney fees. I mean, going back through some of the fees you talked about, the minimum initial investment, people starting out are always frustrated about that. The account service fee drives me crazy. IRA closeout fees are like a company kicking your butt out the door and telling you never to come back. (laughs) uh, Why now to make all these big changes with the fees? Well, again, it goes back to the context that it's very, very clear to Fidelity that the the cost of realizing the American dream is daunting and, and whether that's sending a child to college or, you know, buying a home or preparing yourself for a uh, a secure retirement, even maintaining an emergency fund, we realize that it is getting more expensive. And so Fidelity has a heritage and a tradition of doing things that are really in the best interest of our customers. You you probably know and and remember, we were one of the first companies to put, or the first company to put check writing on money market funds. And people thought we were crazy. But the whole idea is customers have entrusted us with their money. And our goal is to make it easy for them to use. We want to enhance that money. So then when it matters the most to them, it's there for them. I want to talk a little bit about the 529 plan changes because 529 plans, I think personally are a little underutilized by people. You think that this move lowering fees there will encourage more parents to hopefully start putting money away? Yeah, we definitely do. And and I think the real impetus for more parents putting money away for their kids' education, we see this primarily with with younger parents is that they don't want their kids to be in the same situation that they find themselves in now, which is really burdened by significant student debt. So college savings, you know, reducing the barriers to entry to save for college will absolutely support that as well. You know, there's a number of other scenarios where not having minimum initial investments really help also. So, you know, Fidelity recently introduced what we call the Roth IRA for kids. No minimum to open the account, but the fund minimums were still a barrier to entry to get that money invested. It's going to be a great way for young working Americans to get a jump start on saving for retirement. Man, I saw that. You look at the compounding interest on a kid starting a Roth IRA at a young age, Ken, that can be a huge difference maker in their retirement. Yeah, it definitely can. And these moves are really not just, they're not geared just towards younger investors, people just starting out. I mean, these are geared towards people in all life stages of all income levels, all affluence level. You know, I often talk to people who are getting ready to transition into retirement. The biggest goal is to make sure that they can maintain a decent lifestyle in retirement without outliving their money. This is just another way that Fidelity is trying to strip out costs that ultimately end up in the customer's nest egg. Wow. Exciting changes. Where do people read about this, Ken, to get all the details that maybe if they want to see it in writing? Sure. Well, you won't be surprised to hear if you go to fidelity.com. <laughs> it's you know on our homepage. We've got all the information, all the details your listeners would be interested in. Well, you're a busy guy, so we'll let you go. But thanks for spending a few minutes with us, taking us through it. And congratulations on some great changes for consumers. Terrific. Thanks so much, Joe. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I totally get what Ken's talking about. No fee funds. It makes sense. But I'm still baffled by GDP. Who really cares about GDP or to get rid of all the silly double talk Wall Street jurgen? Gross domestic product. Here's a question. Who really cares about gross domestic product? I mean, sure, I like cleaning supplies, Tide Pods, not for eating though, kids. Paper towels, Febreze, and other gross products, you know, as much as the next guy, but shouldn't we include products that aren't gross, like light bulbs and peanut butter and candlesticks, batteries, basketballs? Hey, what special interest group decided to exclude them? Well, as long as people are obsessed with gross domestic products, let's tackle some trivia from that end of the market, shall we? Excluding white label and store brands, what's the number one selling brand of toilet paper in the USA in 2017? That is a gross domestic product. I'll be back with the answer in just a moment.
Stacky Benjamins is supported by Harry's. Harry's founders were fed up with overpaying for expensive razors with some silly, unnecessary features, and they knew that a great shave comes down to great blades made with sharp, durable steel that lasts. And that's why they bought a factory that's been making some of the highest quality blades in the world for over 95 years. They have a quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let Harry's know within 30 days, and they're going to give you a full refund. Here's what they've got, OG. It's a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave, a weighted ergonomic handle, five blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade, a rich lathering shave gel, which I absolutely dig. Every time we talk about Harry's, I talk about two things, the shave gel, and I like the razor a lot. I liked it enough, OG, that I spent some money on the more expensive razor. That you did was, the upgrade. It was even heavier, which I like even better. I like the blade that comes with the trial set like the other blade even better. I liked Harry's enough that I gave the gift of Harry's to three different people at the holidays. It also comes with a travel blade cover. I've never had a travel... Have you ever had a travel blade cover on your on your razor? No. I know. I probably should, but I never have. I always think about that. I'm packing it in with all of my other stuff, and I think, what if I just took my hand and... Whoop. Ah, safety issue. Got yes, it. absolutely. Okay. Well, you no know, longer... Hand. Yes, Harry's gives you a travel blade cover as well. So Stacky Benjamin's listeners and friends can redeem your trial set at harrys.com forward slash SB. Make sure you go to harrys.com forward slash SB to redeem your offer to let them know that we sent you, as mom said, and it helps support the show. Thanks to everybody who's used our link when you've gone to Harry's. We're also super excited that Away supports Stacking Benjamin's Away Luggage is affordable, high-quality suitcases that also charge your phone and your other devices. Well, the suitcase houses the battery that does that, but okay. But it's incredible the way it's built. Like right underneath the handle, the handle pops up, the battery compartment's in there. You flip open the thing, and you can just very quickly take the battery out. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Away's designed the perfect suitcase to make your travel experience test-free. The carry-on bags feature two USB ports and a high-capacity battery that allow you to charge multiple devices on the go, like phones, tablets, laptops, etc. You never have to worry about a dead phone or fight for that one outlet at the airport. It's ultra-durable yet lightweight. It is totally, unbelievably lightweight. Made with premium impact-resistant German polycarbonate. I don't know what German polycarbonate is. I just think it's Sounds lightweight. Sounds important. Smooth ride in any directions. I'll vouch for that. Four 360 degree spinner wheels that won't get stuck or, or break. So here's what's funny. We're getting ready to take the train on our way back from podcast movement in Philadelphia out to the airport. By the way, taking the train to and from downtown. Cheap, easy, incredible. Ah, thanks for telling me to do that as opposed to sitting in the Uber traffic. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. So the deal here is I'm standing in line waiting to get a ticket because this part wasn't so nice. The machines were broken where you can automatically buy the ticket. Stand in line. The guy in front of me turns around, and I don't know this guy from anybody, and he just is staring at, I think he's staring at my legs. And you know. Obviously. I've got some pretty nice legs. Sweet. Yep. You've yes. been using your Harry's razors. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> That he, Real smooth. The high heels really set it off. It, 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 it's the whole package. It is, totally. So I don't blame him, but I'm sitting here wondering what he's doing. And he leans forward and then finally looks up because I'm like, hey, pal, my eyes are up here. <laughs> and he says, is is that a piece of that away luggage I've been hearing about? I'm like, oh, absolutely. And I'm telling him, I'm like, check out how lightweight it is. No, you got to see this, the battery. And I'm going through, he's like, that's fantastic. I've always wondered about these. How much do you like it? How long have you had it? I'm like, I've had it about a month. I've never had a piece of luggage I've cared about until I had one of these. And we're going on and on. And Cheryl's like, away doesn't pay you enough money. I'm like, like, well, I I just like my luggage. She goes, you can tell. Especially when he says, uh, and and what's the three-digit code on the front there? And can I take it for a spin? (laughs) Yeah, can I try that out? Can I try out to see how theft-proof that TSA-approved combination lock is? Right, good stuff. Here's the deal. You're going to get free shipping anywhere in the lower 48 states to buy your away luggage. It comes with a lifetime warranty. If anything breaks, away is going to fix it or replace it for life. You get 100 days to try it out. That's your trial period. If at any point you decide it's not for you, you're going to get a full refund. No questions asked. I like the fact that, you know, they got a million colors. You can pick which one you want. If you get it, not quite your color, send it back, get a new color. Just for the color. Yeah. 
Away is a special offer for listeners of this show. For 20 bucks off a suitcase, go to awaytravel.com slash SB. Use promo code SB at checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash SB, promo code SB. And thanks to them and Harry's for supporting Stacking Benjamins. Hey there, trivia fans. I'm just back from writing my senator to see if we can start doing numbers for non-gross domestic products. But instead of calling it non-gross, which is too negative, what if we gave it a positive spin? Maybe we call it something like um, the statistic of household instruments and technologies. Way more updated and forward-looking. And for short, we can just call it, let me see here at the acronym, you got the S and the H and the, okay, yeah, we can't call it that. I'll come up with something later, but in the meantime, let's get you your trivia, shall we? Here was the question. Excluding white label and store brands, what's the number one selling brand of toilet paper in the USA in 2017? Pushing out more than $233 million worth of crap, AngelSoft grunts out this win with Charmin Ultra Soft as the solid number two. That's just good writing. I'm a big fan of Angel Soft, even though I'm not sure what angels have to do with bodily functions. But that's probably a topic for another day. See ya! Thanks to Ken Hebert for joining us on Dad Shortwave. Oh, gee, is this a reason for people to move their money to Fidelity? It's going to be a reason that people move money to Fidelity. It'll be a total reason they do. (laughs) That's exactly why they're doing it. How do I make money when I lose money on every transaction? Make it up on volume. And in this case, it really matters. There's a lot of different ways that companies make money. This is one of those ways. It's called a loss leader. I love it, by the way, because once you're there, how sticky is it, right? That's what they're looking at. They're looking at the lifetime value of a client going, you know, they'll buy some of our other stuff that's maybe a little more expensive or... You know, they'll do some margin trading or they'll buy an option or whatever. Or just buy one of our mutual funds to round out the portfolio, whatever it might be. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Fidelity's got a lot of stuff. I do like it's not only this that they're doing. This is okay for me. Frankly, for me, I think these two funds with a zero fee, pretty close to a non-story. Like from a former professional point of view, not a big deal. Oh, man, is it free advertising? It is huge free advertising, and they get it. It's free because it's not like they're taking any existing money and cutting off the price, although there's plenty of people that could put money in the new fund from the old fund or whatever, but they're just banking on all the new stuff coming in. There's a reason why Vanguard forever has pounded on the fees are a drag, fees are a drag, fees are a drag thing, which makes you and I roll our eyes because, as yeah. I've said 5,000 times and you have... You have to watch your fees, but that's not the reason you don't reach your goals. But there's a reason they pound that. And Vanguard pounds that because of the fact that they're number one at it. Wouldn't you? Hey, if if all of my cars are blue, I'm going to talk about how a blue car is better than anything else. And they're phenomenal at that messaging. And now Fidelity coming in and doing the same thing. It's funny to watch some of the backlash, watching people online and in our forum and other forums, people going, well, Vanguard's still better. Like they've bought the Kool-Aid so much that fees are the only thing that you're going to see this price war that... Uh, or or they bought the Kool-Aid so much that even though the reason that they chose the product they chose to begin with, there's a superior product out there now, they still won't change. Right, exactly. Okay? Yeah. Like, well, I'm going to go here because it's l- the least expensive. Well, here, this is even less expensive than that. Nah, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. But your whole rationale for doing that, well, but the... Uh, I like all those other stuff. Uh, transaction free ETFs are way cooler. Here's the other reason Fidelity's doing it, by the way. They are five times larger than everybody else. <laughs> like, they don't care. They make more money with their number one fund than all of the other top three ETF providers put together. So they're not losing money on this deal. No, it's a fantastic deal for them. I'll tell you what the bigger issue is for me, and this is just from a customer service standpoint. I love the piece of this that we talked about at the end of the discussion that isn't getting as much press. They cut all those stupid baloney $10 and $15 fees, these nickel and dime fees that also don't really make them any money, but but just piss everybody off. They just kill your enthusiasm for any company. Why companies 
insist on charging these nickel and dime fees are beyond me. Well, I, th- that's the part that I'm actually hoping translates to other parts in the industry because other custodial platforms could use a revamp of those things for sure. It'll be interesting to see how other companies react. This is going to be great for consumers, OG. Hey, let's throw out the Haven Lifeline and tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency, they're putting what you value first. 0% ETF fees. Clearly number one. Number one and number two. Actually, it's your loved ones in your time. And it's why they've created a modern way to buy quality term life insurance. Head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life now to get a free quote. That's stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life, and you'll get a free quote there. I also like their online tool where you can look at how much insurance do I need. Their tool is one of the best that I've seen, if not the best, besides the ones that I used to use when I was a pro that were much more analytical. This one actually is fantastic. Love what they're doing over at Haven Life because they're making life insurance actually simple. Today, we're throwing out the Haven Lifeline to our new BFF, Colin. Say hi, Colin. Hey, Joe and OG. This is Colin from Minnesota. I have a question regarding retirement accounts. My employer offers both a Roth and traditional 401k options. I contribute to both, but the majority goes to the Roth. I also have a Roth IRA that I max out every year. I'm interested in retiring before age 59 and a half and know that I can withdraw contributions to the Roth IRA before 59 and a half without penalty. My question is, if I roll over the Roth 401k into my Roth IRA, does that rollover count as a contribution to the Roth IRA? Would I need to wait a certain length of time before I can access those funds after the rollover? Follow-up question. If I were to roll over the Roth 401k into a Roth IRA, would you recommend that I do it into a separate Roth IRA account for record-keeping purposes? Thanks for your insight. I'm a big fan of the show, although I haven't learned anything yet. Please say hi to Doug for me and let me know what your new address is. I have some leftover coleslaw to send your way. I have no idea what he's talking about with coleslaw. Coleslaw. Oh, Colin. All right. Roth, rolling that baby over. What do you think? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yep. Doesn't matter. Your contributions are your contributions. So when you put the money into the Roth from your rollover contributions sometime down the line, yeah. that's just fine. You'll doesn't have to, to be a separate account? No, nope, doesn't have to be separate. can be the same. The clock starts on those on the five-year number. starts when you open your original Roth. So since you oh. have it open right now, it'll be more than likely five years before you're 15 and a half. So if he's already gone five years, he's good. He's good. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And if he's not, Colin, if you're not, you just wait the X amount of time since you originally opened it. That's why it always makes sense. Even if you can't contribute to it, open a stupid Roth IRA and put a hundred bucks in it. Well, and now you look at, yeah, you look at companies like Fidelity going these minimums where we're getting rid of those too. Yeah. It's easy to do it now. Yep. 50 bucks, dump it in, be done. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Colin. We also get some letters down here in the basement. By the way, the difference between the Haven Lifeline and people sending us the mailbag, not only is the mailbag far more congested and takes us longer to get to, Colin's getting some cool Haven Life branded Stacky Benjamin swag, the greatest money show on earth t-shirt. Easily my favorite piece of uh, our friend Brad's swag. Brad, our designer at uh, Flying Pork Apparel is amazing. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash shirts, by the way, if you want to check out some cool Stacky Benjamin swag or just send us a send us a note. That's all you got to do. But we also get letters down here in the basement. And this one comes to us from Kurt. Kurt said, hey, Joe and OG, I'm 23, plan on going back to college to finish my bachelor's degree using scholarships and company reimbursement. And I want to stop there for a second, OG, because so many people work for companies that give them reimbursement toward college education and don't use that. Look at all the problems we have with student debt. If your company's paying for it, even if you're not sure if you're going to use it or not, I would totally take advantage of that. It's free money, right? I mean, it's, you got you to trade time. Sure. But uh, increasing, you to learn something. Increasing you can, your skill set for free? Yeah. I, I don't know what the downside is. So fantastic. Scholarships, company reimbursement, great reason to do that. He continues, I have $20,000 saved in a regular brokerage account, earmarked for a possible early retirement. I have about $7,000 saved in a Roth IRA, and I make Roth contributions to my 401k, which has around $11,000 in it and is getting matched. 
My wife contributes to her 403B and gets the match as well with about 3000 in it. We have no credit card debt. Student loans are around 18000 eligible for forgiveness, not counting on it, and a car loan of 8000 bucks. Our emergency fund is 2000 in it. We're working on improving that. The big thing that's happening now is we're expecting in March 2019. What are they expecting? March. They're expecting March. They're expecting March. Well, yeah. In 2019. Can't be expecting March 2018. Too late. Yeah. I expected that and it happened. So I get it. And now okay. I'm expecting March. I totally understand it. Well, congratulations. I'm also expecting February 2019. Cool. Yay, stress. He says, we, we immediately applied for life insurance with Haven Life for the next 20 years. Five times their salary for both of us. Our main focus will be building the emergency fund till the baby comes. But what other steps do you think we should take? Maybe some ideas for after the baby's born, like 529 plans? Thanks. Oh boy. Big change is coming to Kurt. By the way, congratulations, Kurt. Your life is changing. You have no idea how much. Sleep will be a thing of the past, but you'll love it. Or you won't love it. But you probably will. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, a a couple things I think, Kurt, when you're looking at the car loan and the student loans, I know that cash flow becomes more difficult when you have more mouths to feed. So if cash flow seems tight at all right now, I might look at trying to get rid of that car loan ASAP and then starting up a fund so that your next car, you might be able to pay cash. I really like uh, depreciating assets, paying cash whenever possible. The other thing you want to think about too is all the stuff associated with the baby, right? Are you going to be needing daycare, all the stuff you have to buy and diapers and it's not inconsequential. It does add up. My kids are 11, nine and two and we go through three gallons of milk a week right now. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I don't drink that. M- I mean, I, I was say the kids st- go through one of those no, too, no. which is amazing. Yeah. One each. Oh, <laughs> I thought you went through two. They go through no, one. No, I go through two gallons of whiskey. D- there you they go. They go through the, the gallons of milk. It makes a weird eggnog combination when you mix the two of them, but it's an interesting <laughs> breakfast. And by the way, OG's going to uh, college classes too. His is a 12 step college course really <laughs> someday <laughs> yeah hopefully not but continuing all those things and by the way a lot of people have baby showers and what you'll find is all that stuff you get at the baby shower goes away faster than you ever thought i can't believe how quickly we blew through all that stuff like we got so many diapers when our twins were born i remember thinking we've got diapers forever and then it felt like week two and a half when I'm going, what they the hell happened? crap 15 times a day. <laughs> what happened to all these diapers? Where did they go? So just on that note, I have a theory about baby showers. And if you tell people the gender of the baby before the baby shower, all you'll get will be clothes. Or like if it's a boy, all blue clothes, right? If it's a girl, all pink clothes. If you don't know or don't tell anybody, maybe do it at the party or something, you'll get kind of a smattering of like yellows and light blues. Way better. And, yeah. Greens and that sort of stuff. Plus the so people will be motivated to like get you other stuff. Cause the way the shopping goes, especially in my family with my mom, my mother-in-law and my wife, if we have to go do something like that, it's like, Oh, look at this cute little outfit. It's like, yeah, but they need a car seat. Should we throw in on the car seat with everyone? No, 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 no. We'll get them the cool blanket. It's beautiful. So don't tell anybody the gender. Man, you have a lot of stuff going on. Welcome to the Shopping Manipulation Podcast. I'm yeah, don't sweat the college stuff. People have done it before, juggled multiple things. You will get through it. And in two years from now or however long it takes you, you'll have a two-year-old. You'll be happy that you're done. You'll be tired like you like you know, Joe, like you said. I did it. I did my master's program when my kids were young, and it sucked. And by college stuff, OG's not talking about college for your kid. You should start saving for that right now. And what a lot of people do is they decide that they're going to save less money for retirement, which is why I want to get rid of that car loan. Yeah. People say, oh, you know what? If things are getting tight because of all these baby expenses. I'm going to save less for retirement. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Pay off the car loan and then set up a new car fund for a new to you car in the future that you can pay cash for and set up a college savings fund because you know you've done the studies on this if you're going to an in-state school it's going to be different depending on the state but about how much is it per month to save yeah from the time they're born yeah 400 bucks yeah and there's where the whiskey every, comes in every Kurt. month there's the whiskey right for there 22 years times three if you have three kids oh and then there's daycare and private school tuition. And the 529 plan and is... And a new car. 
The 529 plan. 529 plans. And shoes. Oh my God. Don't get me started on shoes. <laughs> you know how fast kids grow through shoes? Uh, You're like, didn't so I just ugly. get you those? What's wrong with them? How do, first of all, how do they have holes in them? I have no shoes that have holes in them. I have shoes that I've had for 15 years that don't have holes in them. How do your shoe, How do your pants have holes in them? Do you remember your parents saying this stuff, by the way? Oh God, yes. And now listen to you. Oh, listen terrible. to you. I, I remember my dad saying, like, how... Do, <laughs> I remember thinking, like, how does my dad have shoes that are 15 years old when I'm, like, 15, right? Like, he got shoes when I was born, and he hasn't changed them out. We don't need to. Like, they don't... It's like that... Uh, is that a progressive commercial where everybody turns into their parents? Have you seen that one? Where it's the meeting of the dads? Maybe we'll talk about this no. a little bit later. I'll find it. Yeah, maybe. Hey, usually at this point in the show, before we say goodbye, you'll hear us mention how listeners can learn more by hiring my good friend across the table here, OG. But now, OG, you need some help, huh? Yeah. You know, it's been a couple of years since we started this whole taking clients from the uh, podcast thing. Been doing the show for a really long time, obviously. And it still kind of boggles my mind and just mesmerizes me and humbles me that people want to talk to me about their money and I'm happy to do it. But it's going crazy. We're growing like gangbusters and I need a little help. So if you are an advisor or if you are a CFP, or if you're kind of going to be one soon, maybe you've done a lot of the work and haven't sat for the exam yet or something like that, and you're interested in learning a little bit more about how we do business, I need a little help. So if you are open to that, or you want to learn more about it, just send me an email at my Stacking Benjamins email. It's just OG at stackingbenjamins.com. If you want to throw in a little bit about yourself, that'd be helpful. Nothing formal, right? We don't need like 15 page cover letters with 12 pages of CV resume. But, but I will say this. But a little bit of stuff about you would be helpful. Well, and gifts to the co host are kindly accepted. Yes. To the co host. Uh, Send those to Joe at stackingbenjamins.com. You can PayPal Joe to put your name at the top of the list when he goes through the emails. <laughs> if you want to be considered. If you want to slip me a 20. Yep. Yeah. Where's the donate button on. <laughs> Joe's my recruiting manager, but seriously, we're looking for good help. And if you're uh, certainly, if you're still interested in having us work with you, you can uh, get in touch with us that way as well. But um, I'm sending out a plea. I'm going to put it on the Facebook page too. And I'll say, if that's not you, but you'd like OG in your corner, head to stackybedjamins.com forward slash OG. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. And there we go there too. Hey, uh, thanks also to people who leave us a review of this year podcast. Here's a review mom's putting on her fridge right now. Five stars from C-T-A-T-Y. Doug is great. And I can't believe I'm reading this one out loud. This show is great if you fast forward about three quarters so you can skip straight to Doug's trivia. If you happen to listen to the beginning, you'll learn some great stuff. I happen to diversify my investments across accounts, exclamation point. I now have my money in tax deferred accounts, a Roth IRA, and a 401k, exclamation point. My risk-adjusted return is so much lower now. <laughs> After listening a while, I finally took all of my accounts and put them into high yield bonds because the returns are so high. This is where it goes off the rails are so high. And we know the stock market's going to crash five stars. And oh so boy. somebody said they found that helpful. One person out of one person found that helpful. That's a very helpful review. I think they like themselves. <laughs> I think it's a pretty awesome. Thanks for the review. If you'd like to warn people about what they're getting into when they listen to Stacky Benjamins, head to wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever, and uh, please leave us a review. All right, that's going to do it for us. Doug, man, what should we have learned today? Sure thing, Joe. I'm going to let you get back to dropping the kids off at the lake. I'll tell everybody what they should have learned today. First, looking for a good advisor who's in your corner? If your advisor is also a broker, it's probably impossible to be a fiduciary and a broker at the same time. Look for one or the other, but maybe not one who's trading hats back and forth. Second, looking for the cheapest fund out there? Try Fidelity. Although, we'll bet that fees aren't the reason you aren't reaching your goals, no matter how much the popular press focuses on that issue. But the big lesson? Maybe do an Ask Jeeves search or something before talking about GDP on this show. Turns out the word gross really means something completely different than disgusting. And Joe keeps saying it's disgusting that I don't even know that fact now. Joe, what do you think? I listened to this show? Ain't nobody got time for that. 
special thanks to Ken Hevert from Fidelity Investments for joining us. For more on all of Fidelity's recent changes, head to Fidelity.com. This show was created by Joe Salcihai, produced by Richie Rutter-Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at at SBenjamin'sCast or on our Facebook page. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I'm wondering if KY Jelly is actually made in Kentucky. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. Welcome to the after show. You were talking about your dad and his 15-year-old shoes? Mm -hmm. I just texted you a uh, video, it's a progressive commercial that I think is super funny. Hi everyone, welcome to our uh, daddy Stasis support group. We've got some new friends this week, welcome. Good to see you, I'm Rick, I'm the group leader. What we'd like to do here is start with our mantra. We are not our dads. We are not our dads. Jim, why don't we start with you this week? Well, yeah, like uh, most of you, um, we just bought a house. Oh, very nice. And yeah, now I'm turning into my dad. I text him full sentences. I refer to every child as chief. This hat was free. What am I supposed to do, not wear it? Next thing you know, I'm telling strangers defense wins championships. Well, it does. Right? Why is the door open? Are we trying to air condition the whole neighborhood? Heck, now I'm the guy who gets up at five just to tell people I'm up at five. I woke up at four. Oh, that's not one up. No one wins with a one-up, okay? Did you see how he let the dadness overtake him? Uh, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, you know, at least it's not totally hopeless. I bundled home and auto on the internet with Progressive. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Boy. And I know what a meanie is now. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of them are funny. Some, you know, some, some, are, some of them are, oh. But other ones are funny. Oh. Yeah. I think it's a meme. I don't think it is. No, I think it's Mimi, because it's two me's. Spelled me, me. Yeah. Me. Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto. I mean, why would I replace this? It's not broken. Works great. He's got a flip phone. <laughs> of course he does. Good job, Progressive. I think it's called a Mimi. No, <laughs> it's a meme. I mean, why would I throw this hat out? The only thing that my dad says <sighs> that always is strange to me You'll tell my dad some story that's really cool, and he likes it a lot, and he gets into it. He's a great guy to talk to, but he leans forward and he goes, and this is when you know he's into the story. He says, you got to be in me. And it's funny because he said that, I don't know, since I was an adult and we've had adult to adult conversations. So I'm telling him about something. Hey, dad, we had this thing happen on the podcast. You got to be in me. You got to be, you know, Urban Meyer <laughs> just had problems at Ohio State University. You got to be me. And it's funny when we all got together for the holidays last year, whole family sitting at the table and somebody said something interesting and dad says, you got to be me. I finally thought about those words and I turned to him and I said, no, dad, do you imagine how hard it would be for somebody to you? Like, you're not a small man. How, how the heck would we? And uh, that, was, uh, that was the hilarity at the Seahigh family party. Have, have we ever done the whole, like, thing of on Wikipedia?
Oh, yes. Yeah, we did. So there was the, I can't find it, but the line goes something like the the etymology of, you know, you've got to be me to which the other person asserts, no, I you not. (laughs) It's so like matter of fact, Um, which is kind of the conversation we had. No, no, I, I you you not. not. No, no, no. Please. No. You know, one of my favorite uh, dad books ever. My dad says. My dad says. Fantastic if, book. If your father was anything like mine and you read that book, you're like, except for the fact that my dad was not a physicist at like UC Berkeley or wherever the hell this guy was, that is totally everything my dad would say. Yeah, you're never going to go out with that girl. You're way too ugly. <laughs> like totally like just, you know, <laughs> no filter. Exactly how it is. Like, oh, great. You're moving back home. Well, I turned your office into a den, so you can sleep on the couch. Like, haha, sorry, Dad. Just kidding. Oh, you were not kidding. <laughs> you oh. really want me to sleep on the couch? I remember when my bedroom became like my mom's workroom. <laughs> and I can't remember coming home from college. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where's all my stuff? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm, apparently, I'm not coming back. She's yeah. like, exactly. Exactly. This is mom's yes. sewing room now. I'm like, oh, apparently, we're going to the basement. Uh-huh. Exactly.